Guys, there's a massive upgrade coming down the pike for Ethereum very soon that could impact the price of Ether. And there's a lot of buzz about this going online because many people are scared that the price of Ether is going to go down as a result. So I want to make this video today to talk about the dirty details of this, analyze this from my perspective as an Ethereum developer who works this technology every single day, and tell you exactly what you need to know. Is this all just FUD? Is there actually cause for concern? I'm going to get into that and talk about exactly what I think is going to happen. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step by step from start to finish, break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can try to do that over at dappyverse.com forward slash bootcamp. Just click the link down below to get started today. All right, so let's waste no time. Let's jump right into this. So Ethereum is set for its next major upgrade, the Shanghai upgrade in March, which at the time of releasing this video is maybe like a month or so away. And so many people are up in arms about this. They're completely concerned because they think it's going to cause the price of Ether to dump. So why are they worried? Well, you have to understand what this upgrade fundamentally does. So let's jump into that. All right, so I've got a diagram on my screen right now that's going to explain this. So what you have to understand setting the stage for this is Ethereum has gone through a major overhaul in the past two years or so. Like under the hood, it's completely changed how it works. So what happened? Well, Ethereum transitioned from proof of work to proof of stake. So what does that mean? Well, basically, that's the consensus mechanism that the blockchain uses to make sure everybody's got the same copy of the information to make sure your transactions are valid when they go on chain basically just to provide that the blockchain operates as intended. So, you know, Bitcoin's on proof of work, Ethereum started on proof of work, but then it switched to proof of stake. So what's the difference between those two things? All right, so basically proof of work, the whole idea is you have these miners who are mining the cryptocurrency, mine the chain, uh, and they use their computational resources to make sure the transactions are good, all right, when they go in the chain. And they get rewarded, you know, passive income for doing that. Basically, they solve cryptographic puzzles, the blockchain pays them. Now, Ethereum moved to proof of stake, which basically means instead of solving puzzles, you know, to get money to secure the network, you are taking cryptocurrency and you're locking it up into a node. Okay, you're taking Ether, the Ethereum cryptocurrency, locking into a node, and then you got skin in the game, you have stake in the game. And if you act honestly, then you're going to get paid a passive income reward for doing that. And if you act dishonestly, of course, your stake is going to get penalized and you are going to get slashed. And now this upgrade is actually taking place over time, and now Proof of Stake fully went live in September of 2022. Okay, so Ethereum now is Proof of Stake. It's no longer Proof of Work. But there's one big catch. Okay, there's one big catch with that. So uh, again, this happened incrementally. So the thing called the Beacon Chain, all right, which is sort of the initial uh, effort that went live for Ethereum 2.0 or, or ETH staking, or, you know, uh, Proof of Stake, whatever you want to call it, that went live at the end of 2020, okay? So everybody who's like, hey, I want to participate in running this, they went ahead and took Ether, they took cryptocurrency and sent it to the Beacon Chain and started running these validators, as you can see on my screen right here, okay? But the big problem is everybody who went and did that could not get their Ether out of their validators. So if you sent ETH to the Beacon Chain, you started staking it, it's still locked up in there. Everybody who deposited since then has not been able to withdraw, and subsequently, everybody who's continued to deposit has not been able to take their Ether out until some undetermined amount of time. But now we have clarity that the Shanghai upgrade that's coming up down the pike is the main benefit of it is that it's going to enable Ether withdrawals. So people can take the money out that they have staked so it's no longer locked in, okay? And so that's the main thing, and it's going to happen you know, very soon about a month away at the time of recording this video, scheduled for March of 2023. All right, so that's what everybody's worried about, but let's actually try to analyze this more and determine should you actually worry about it? Okay, is this actually a big deal? Am I worried about it? Of course, what I'm about to say is not financial advice and telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information, but let's start thinking critically about this. So let's start with the view that it's bad, okay? Let's try to analyze it. So their whole idea is that all these people who have just locked their ether up forever are going to just completely withdraw it. Quantifying some of those things in that regard, you know, we've got 17 million ether, okay, staked on the beacon chain right now at the time of recording this video. It's about 510,000 unique validators, okay, at a current interest rate of 3.7% APR. So the argument in favor is if, you know, a significant amount of this ether actually liquid hit the market, let's say it was 10% of this ether, let's say it was like 20%, 25% of this ether, that could cause a significant amount of temporary sell pressure, okay? Particularly if some of this came from people who are staking with staking services. So that's one of the biggest fears here. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, you know, 
uh, one of the biggest complaints about Ether is that you have to hold 32 Ether in order to run a validator. So if you want to stake Ethereum natively on the network itself, you have to hold 32 Ether and run a computer in order to do that, right? It's going to prevent most people from doing that. So in instead, they go to staking services like Lido Finance. Coinbase has these. These are just casual people who just buy some Ether, click stake inside of an app, and then it gets locked up forever. Sometimes they didn't even know it's going to happen. And now whenever, you know, the upgrade comes on the pike that these are the most likely people to start withdrawing and start, you know, dumping onto the marketplace, in addition to some of the people who uh, run full nodes themselves. And if a significant amount of that Ether actually hit the market, let's say it was 25% of that or so, it could be sell pressure, you know, similar to the types of things that we saw with, you know, FTX or even the Terra Luna collapse that happened during the past year, which a lot of people have PTSD from that stuff, and that's why they're worried about it. All right, so let's look at the other viewpoint, which says this is not going to be as big a deal as most people are thinking it out to be, okay? And I'll tell you what I think here in a minute. All right, so basically, the view here is that, you know, most of the people who are staking right now are actually long-term committed ETH holders who actually are participating in the network. The significant amount of these people are actually running you know, solo staking or doing their own validators and have a long-term skin in the game. And the amount of people who are just casually staking Ether on these other types of services are, you know, probably not going to cause as much sell pressure as we actually think. That we're actually worried about. And the other view on this is that, you know, crypto prices have dumped so much, you know, since their all-time highs that pretty much everybody that, you know, most of the incentive here is it just holds until prices recover unless you absolutely need the money. And that most people that hit liquid on the market aren't going to, you know, sell quite as much as they, they're scared of. The other view on this is that everybody thinks of this as a one-time flash in the pan event where, you know, all of a sudden ETH becomes unlocked and then whoever's going to sell just instantly goes and takes all their ETH and starts dumping it onto the market. So the view here is that one, that's probably not going to happen even if it could, but number two, it can't actually happen. So let's we'll start off with why it can't actually happen. So the devil's in the details with how Ethereum withdrawals work. There's a there's a note on this on the ethereum.org website if you want to check this out. It's got a huge list of how withdrawals work, but the whole point here is there's two different types of withdrawals, okay? There's basically like a fast withdrawal where you can just get your rewards and everybody who wants to do that could basically do it within a matter of a week of these going live. But if you want to withdraw your principal as well, basically the ETH that you initially staked, not just the rewards themselves, that could take much longer because there's actually a queue. So if there's a big run, okay, it's not like everybody can just take their ETH at time. That's going to get leaked out over time as a queue has, you know, a certain a bottleneck associated with it, okay? So either way you slice it, we're very unlikely to see a, just a massive run on withdrawing ETH and going to dump it onto the marketplace. And the more likely view is that if we are gonna see some type of run, it's probably gonna be on rewards because, I mean, a lot of people who got rewards that haven't been able to draw them yet, a lot of people are gonna sell it, even though the price hasn't gone down. Maybe not everybody, but a significant amount of people will. And so let's say that like about a million ETH was eligible for withdrawal, okay? So even if all that ETH was instantly sold in the marketplace, it would still be less ETH than was sold, okay, like during the FTX collapse, for example, over a, you know, three, four day period. And like I was saying before, even if all that ETH is sold, it's probably not going to get sold in a single day. All right, so those are the two viewpoints on why this could be bad or it could be nowhere near as bad as people are expecting. So what is my particular view on this? So again, I always preface this with not financial advice, but I'm telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. So what I'll say is in the short term, it's actually really hard to tell exactly what's going to happen. I don't ever really try to predict short term crypto price movements. You know, this could be a thing where the price, you know, changes just because people are scared that there's going to be sell pressure, right? You don't actually know what markets are going to do on short term time horizons. Uh, but my view is that short term doesn't actually really matter that much. And that long term, that liquid staking on Ethereum can actually be very good for Ethereum. And I'll explain why. So now that ETH can actually become liquid, I think there's a lot of people who are sitting on the sidelines who would be staking ETH, but are not doing it because they can't get it back if they wanted to. But basically, once you enable those withdrawals and the flexibility to get access to your capital, there's a lot of people who will put money into ETH and start staking for different reasons, all right? So number one is, I think there's also a lot of uh, possibility to attract institutional players, just big players of size to come in and do this for a couple of reasons. Number one is you're already looking at an asset with a ton of upside growth potential in terms of the principal, just the amount of money that you put in to buy the cryptocurrency and stick it on there, right? Price appreciation of the principal. Because even if ETH just goes back to its prior all-time high, that's roughly a 3x return from where you are now, okay? And that there's a ton of price history basically above where we are. Now, I realize things have to kind of turn around for crypto in order to happen, but most likely that's going to happen relatively soon on the grand scheme of things. 
Now, the other big piece of icing on the cake here is that you're going to get yield on top of that. Okay, you get a ton of appreciation in terms of principal price, but they get paid, you know, three, five, six, seven, maybe even 10%, depending on people's stake and how the MEV rewards work on top of that. Okay, so imagine that you were able to put something in there and you were able to earn really healthy amount of passive income. Well, if ETH price triples and your passive income triples, right, your principal's tripled. Like, it's just an insane situation that you really can't replicate anywhere else. And once, you know, staking withdrawals go live and they're liquid and time sort of plays out to see whether that was really going to impact the price or not and things start to improve for crypto, then I think this can be a massive catalyst for more people to enter in the space and can be incredibly bullish for ETH long term. Of course, not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. All right. So that's an overview of the ETH Shanghai upgrade that's coming in just a few weeks at the time of recording this video. Scheduled for March 2023. This is the big upgrade that's going to make ETH that's locked up in the network on proof of stake liquids. So people are going to draw it. There's a lot of FUD fear that's going to crash the price of Ether. I've laid out the reasons for why this you know could happen or why it may not be as bad as people think. In the short term, I'm not too concerned one way or the other, but long term, I do think this actually can be a positive thing for the space going forward. So I hope you liked this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There are these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast in this technology as I am and you want to break into the blockchain and change your career, you know, that's the best way to take advantage of this tech trend is to actually work in the industry because you're going to have access to so many things that other people aren't going to. Yeah, the best way to do that is to become a developer. So how can you do that? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They like you to make courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those, you went to the next step or hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely. I should become a blockchain master, step-by-step start to finish, break in the industry, increase your salary well past 100K over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.